This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with the second video for Module 15. In this video, I'm going to be talking about calculating equilibrium constants. Remember that the equilibrium constant is the ratio of the products to reactants, or the concentration of the products to reactants, or in reality, it's the concentration of the product of the products. We've got multiplication going on. In the last video, I talked about that if you have an equilibrium constant that's greater than 1, that it tells you that your reaction favors the production of products when that reaction, reaction is at equilibrium. And if the reaction constant is less than 1, then that reaction favors the reactants when it is at equilibrium. The equilibrium constant is always the same for a reaction at the same temperature. It's not affected by the starting concentration of reactants. But if you change the temperature, you will have a different equilibrium constant. So to calculate your equilibrium constant, which is the big K, you need to start with a balanced equation always a good idea in chemistry, but especially for calculating the equilibrium constant because you use those coefficients as exponents in the formula. So you want to make sure you have the correct coefficient to begin with. You also can ignore anything that's a solid or a liquid in the reaction. You're only going to consider the solutions, things that are in aqueous solution, or that ones that products or reactants that exist as gases. And you also get to forget about the units. We don't usually write any sort of unit with the equilibrium constant. It's just a straight number, even though we are measuring the concentration as molarity. So for an example, for this equation, A plus B gives you C plus D. And these small letters in front are filling in for the mole coefficients. The general equation, then, is to have the product of the products raised to the coefficient as an exponent, divided by the product of the reactants, with each of those also raised to the coefficient for each reactant as the exponent. So let's look at a particular example just to make that a little bit clearer. So let's consider the reaction that has two moles of nitrogen monoxide mixing with oxygen gas to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. So this reaction at equilibrium at a temperature of 230 degrees Celsius, we find out that the concentrations of the nitrogen monoxide are 0.0542 molarity, and of oxygen gas, it's 0.127 molarity, and nitrogen dioxide, our concentration is 15.5 molarity. So we need to calculate the equilibrium constant at this temperature. So the equation, if you remember, our constant is going to equal the concentration of our, our nitrogen dioxide raised to a power of 2, because that's the coefficient, and that is product, over the concentration of our reactants, which are nitrogen monoxide, also squared, because that's the coefficient, times oxygen gas, which doesn't have any exponent because it, the coefficient is just 1. So to fill in the numbers, then, now that we've set up the equation, the um, concentration of the nitrogen dioxide is 15.5 molarity, and we have to square that. And then in the denominator, our concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is 0.0542 molarity, also squared, times the, mol the molarity of the oxygen gas, which is 0.127. So you'll just have to trust me if you go ahead and do all of this math, because this would take a little bit of time. We're going to come up with an answer of 6.44 times 10 to the fifth power. So you can see this is a very large number. It is greater than 1. And if you remember from our last video, that this tells us that the re action favors the products at equilibrium. If your equilibrium constant is above 1, if it's a large number, and this is, this is quite a large number, that means that you're going to mostly have products at when the reaction is finished, or is when it is at equilibrium. The book doesn't mention the word reaction quotient, but it does ask you to think about it. So I thought I would talk to you about what a reaction quotient is. And basically, a reaction quotient is the ratio of the products 
of two reactants when the reaction is not yet at equilibrium. So that for the same equation, if you look at our reaction quotient formula, it looks exactly the same as our formula for K for the equilibrium constant. But the equation or the reaction is not yet at equilibrium. So the number you get when you're calculating using the concentrations of a reaction that's still in progress can't be called an equilibrium constant. And we do have an official word for that, which the textbook doesn't use, known as a reaction quotient, and it has the letter Q, capital Q, as the symbol for it. But the textbook does ask you to compare Q, even though they don't call it that. They just call it a constant that's figured for a reaction that's not yet at equilibrium. So when you're figuring out using this formula for a reaction that is not yet at equilibrium and you want to know which way the reaction must shift, a trick to doing that is to line up the numbers that you have as if they were in a number line, going from lowest to highest just like you normally would. And look where you have to go to move from Q to K. So if you calculate with the figures that are given, the reaction at this moment gives you a value of 0 0.5, and you are told that the equilibrium constant is 1, then to get from this value to your equilibrium value, you have to move to the right. And this tells you the reaction also has to move to the right. It needs to shift to make more products in order to reach equilibrium. And in comparison, if you do a calculation given the values and you get a number that is larger than what your equilibrium constant is given, then you set it up so that you very clearly have to shift to the left. The reaction has to produce more reactants to reach a point of equilibrium. So this little trick of using your values for the given equilibrium constant and then this would be the calculated value for whatever state you are in for the uh, information given in the equation, then you can set it up to figure out does my reaction need to shift to the right to make more products or does it need to shift to the left to make more reactants. And this finishes what I'd like to say about equilibrium constants in this video.